We are the Coin Boys, your average everyday crypto bros. That's right. It's Andy, aka producer by the way, or producer BTW on Twitter. And sitting across from me is Daniel Gutierrez. What's up, everybody? At D Gutierrez eighty four on Twitter. What's up, man? Happy Monday. Happy Monday. How are you feeling about the new genie? The new genie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Twitter exploded, man. I've never seen like like well, I first see- tell them what you're talking about because well, same Aladdin. genie. Okay. Folks, Aladdin. If the you live action Aladdin trailer has been released. Yes. And Will Smith is the genie. Yeah. Well, he's been the genie for like that's that's already. Been, no, we know were that. already complaining about that. Right. And then on Entertainment Weekly, he came out and he wasn't blue. So people were freaked out going, oh, my God, is the genie not going to be blue? Is the genie not going to be blue? And now we got our blue genie. And we're like, oh, my God, bring back Will Smith. <laughs> bring oh back God. the regular Will Smith. <laughs> Please. Um, it looks it looks tragic. Nothing about that impressed me. Zero things about that whole I'll tell you why. Because no one asked for a live action Aladdin movie. I did. Did you? I did. That, that a musical, been done. fine. That live action. Done. No, that could have been done. That could have been they're done doing properly. The Lion but whoever whoever is doing this, I don't know what they're doing. It just looks bad. It looks cheesy. Like I feel the okay. So if you look at the trailer, the mm. the, the the tiger sand monster that comes out at the beginning, who who uh, who opens up the chamber. Yeah. Or, or Jafar whatever. shows him the yeah. stairway. So to So that lion looked like it was made out of styrofoam and put into the side of a wall in this movie. I felt. That the animated movie back in ninety what two ninety three had better special effects than this movie now. That movie is a classic, dude. Like it still holds up. Exactly. I mean, they could have I, I, they could have just CGI'd or blue screened in that 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 particular thing. Um, I mean, we got we got James Earl Jones for Mufasa. We right. could have brought back that tiger from the, from the original one. This just reminds me of a nightmare when I was in college. I was selling TVs at a department store, and the Aladdin DVD came out. And it was a big deal, but the, my boss is like, we this have to play Blu-ray, right? Or Blu-ray, or something. Like, I don't, I don't well, remember. DVD. I think it DVD. was DVD. Uh, this was like collector's edition, like announcement. D- mm-hmm. Disney holds back their product, you the know, vault. To, the vault. So yeah. they re-released Aladdin, and my boss is like, we're playing Aladdin on all these TVs, and for like weeks. The song, we were all singing the songs all the time, just naturally. <laughs> it's a Lee Fabulous He Alibaba. <laughs> and then the customer's like, Why are you singing? Oh, sorry, the Aladdin's been playing That's all uh, we have. nonstop. I can't play anything else. And I was so. I would have quit. I, <laughs> I love Aladdin. I love it. I would have quit. I will tell you this. After hearing that song, um, and there was some reason the, the movie would play, you wouldn't pay attention to the playing scenes. It was the music scenes you would hear. Yeah. And that song. Uh, I heard, I don't know. And, and a it's still, times? I still stepped away from it and said, damn, it's a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's my That's moral the, of the power story. of Aladdin, yes. by the way. That's the power of Aladdin. Um, but, uh, Daniel, uh, I'm not happy or excited to see that. I am more excited to see what happens. Yeah. yeah, we don't talk about politics. We don't rage too much about politics, but I will rage over a Disney remake in a, yes. in a heartbeat. Uh, there's probably on my Twitter. I've probably posted a blue genie gif already. If not, good job. Because I'm excited to I'm sh- proud of share <laughs> what Daniel is. They're introduced. really good. They're really good. All these, all these uh, memes. But uh, uh, quick. Besides that, uh, we want to thank everyone for joining us again on a Block News Evening Monday episode, which you guys have known. We changed kind of our structure. Um, we do have an announcement that uh, we do in-depth episodes every week. Uh, but it's not always every week. So today, this week, we will have this Block News episode with our, our current guest coming up soon, uh, Wendy, Wendy O. Uh, and we are excited to have her. But, Daniel, I just wanted to remind them that tomorrow there won't be an in-depth interview. We will not have an in-depth interview. Um, mainly because I decided we need to just highlight us. Highlight us? Yes. Huh? What about mm, us? I think that was more of a schedule conflict. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was too. But so it was all good. On the, the topic of us, though, because that's a perfect transition, uh, we have, what do we have? We have a website, right? Now. We have a website, thecoinboys.com. You can email us at that website, thecoinboys at thecoinboys.com. You can call a phone number, 424-372-7437. Leave a message. If you guys have any questions, want to talk to us, want to say hello, whatever it is, please leave a message. Um... You can find us on social media through that through the coinboys.com. You can actually go straight to uh, Google Play, SoundCloud, or iTunes, and uh, you can subscribe, rate, and review there. Uh, if you're new to us, first off, thank you so much for joining us. Go back and take a listen to a few of the episodes that we have 
uh, we repeat this over and over again. Our philosophy is it's not going to be one coin to rule them all. There's going to be many. So take a listen, see. And even, even if a coin that we interviewed doesn't pan out to be the future of anything, something from that project, there's a possibility that it will move on and be reborn in some or other fashion. Yeah, and we don't talk price on this podcast, and we do pretty much do our best to educate ourselves and help you guys with your research, because we do recommend uh, do your own research. Yeah. And uh, while we don't talk price, uh, everybody's flipping about how all the green candles are up, like right now for, for everything's like up and green. They're like, it's back! <laughs> Crypto's back! I just was like, oh. All right. I just shrug or something. Just <laughs> enjoy it. Enjoy it. For the, um, for the day. But uh, I also want to shout out Bit Ninja. Uh, if you guys like clothing, because I know you're wearing some right now, maybe you're not. Um, but we sell. And if you're not, let us know. Yeah, let us know. We have T-shirts available through our partner Bit Ninja, who has been on the show. Uh, shout out to you, buddy! And uh, check out on the Coinboys website. There's a merchandise tab. Yes. We have headphones and uh, a couple of shirt options, and uh, just I'm really excited. But Daniel, the title of this episode says Block News, so let's get right into it. Sounds good. All right, Daniel. So here we are. Block news. Yes. As always, every week, every Monday night. Yeah. And we got a really great guest. Uh, she's been on the show before, and she's a really close friend and a Satoshi dropper. Crypto Wendio. What's up, Wendy? Thanks for coming on. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me again. It's been a minute. It's been it a has while, been a but we've seen while. you a few times since I've spoken with you. Glad that you were able to make it today. Just uh, uh, for some people that might not, uh, any new listeners might not have met you before, update us on what you're what you're doing in your world in uh, the crypto Wendio world. Oh gosh, Wendy is doing a lot of stuff. So one of the, well, a couple of things I'm doing. So I'm doing, I work for two, two companies, well, three companies now. I'm an advisor for Twitter Crypto. So that is, um, I just kind of, you know, right now it's really slow because of the market, but it's just like di- talking about just different um, tactics for, you know, getting sponsorships and all that type of stuff. And then I'm working for Rapids, which is, there's a couple of the members from Twitter Crypto there. Um, Rapids, we're a P2P currency, and we're just focusing on building partnerships and getting in growth and all kinds of stuff. And we also did not have an ICO, which is um, a unique thing, of, thing about us, so we're we're um, integrating ourselves into real estate, into um, esports and soccer, all kinds of fun stuff. And then I'm also working for Monetary Unit, which is another P2P currency that's been around since 2014. And we um, we acquired a company called Flubit, which is a UK based um, e-commerce site and allow, that allows you to pay with fiat, crypto, and our currency Mew. And if you use Mew, you save fifteen percent. So it's pretty doing pretty exciting things. And then obviously Wendy's got her own I got my I have my YouTube channel. I'm trying to build my subscribers there. And then I have my consultancy I open. I help companies in the space um transparently market and do things correctly. <laughs> yeah. If you friend Wendy on LinkedIn, your screen will blow up with the amount of things that she has in terms of yeah. In terms of her job history. No, th- yes. I mean, you, this is like a lot more on your plate in a good way than the last time we spoke to you on the show. Um, so I'm like really excited for you. It sounds like you're, you're like super busy. I mean, that's a lot of yeah. uh, that's a lot of juggling, but it sounds like uh, interesting stuff. So and uh, most importantly, Wendy's a mother. So sometimes yes. you will hear yes. the childlike lullabies of willie nelson in the background <laughs> and the ice cream man is down the street right now so you guys might hear him too i, hear him. <laughs> I haven't had an ice cream guy come by my place in a long time are uh, you serious you, you could you could you could come down to my hood because this guy is let me tell you this guy is relentless this guy is here like multiple times a day he even comes like sometimes at 10 p.m at night after i put the baby down i'm like listen dude you gotta go <laughs> <laughs> damn <laughs> well he is relentless but hey if he's making his money he's making his money i'm every summer i used to have so many ice cream trucks come by but um, and there's one guy we called him the Ding Ding Man, which in in the retrospect ding, ding. that's not a good thing to call him. But his his truck just went ding ding, and he sold nachos. He was okay. my favorite man on the planet. Because I was gonna say that sounds like the Elote Man to me, because we have an Elote Man as well. Yes, the Elote Man was also was, <laughs> al- was also a part of my childhood. And then every, but every winter it was that that Elote Man became the Champurado Man. Champurado <laughs> is. Uh, a delicious chocolate drink in the winter that you should drink. It's basically hot chocolate, but they thicken it. 
Don't they put cinnamon in it too? Yeah, it's it's like uh, yeah, yeah. sometimes it can be spicy, so be careful. Yeah, if if you ask my brother in law, he has passed away, but when he was still alive, the story that he would tell to all his homeboys would be he would tell them that he grew up so hard and so rough, and the only time he was able to eat was when the lote man would come by. But obviously, it was a um, a fable, and yeah, it was a exa- fable. It was a fable. Oh, he well, then you just told my life story. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll come because claim that my one. mother, my mother in law, used yeah. to cook. Yes, baby, you may have more apple. Yeah, my mother-in-law used to cook, but our my brother-in-law Jimmy was a he was a joker. He was a, a big joker. Your daughter is so polite. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Should I? Um, I'm gonna just mention that as a kid, we had a motorcycle ice cream man. What? Yep. And this guy, okay. I have vague memories. I was like five or six. And he had like a, a nice cooler on the back. I mean, you know, it wasn't like an ice cream truck, but he would roll around the, it was like the ice cream motorcycle <laughs> man's here. Everybody I'm like, stay away from that man. <laughs> so you would listen to the, and he would do like a cool spin and stuff. It was okay, a well, real maybe deal. That's, that's a really cool this guy was marketing smart. technique. Right no, there. but no one, I've never heard of that before, but you just reminded me of this. Guys, was he back east or was he here? This, was in, this was in New Jersey, Fairlawn, okay. New Jersey. Guys, the point is there is no ice cream blockchain. I think we're going to have to start up a uh, cream blood. coin. So, oh my god! <laughs> so let's do this, guys. But uh, anyway, let's uh, let's jump into some uh, topic topics that are, it, it has been kind of uh, slow slow week. But uh, mm-hmm. Daniel, tell us about uh, you want to talk about the Wells Fargo thing? Yeah, just as a reminder, guys, uh, centralization sucks. <laughs> when your money is not in complete control of your own self and your own will and power. You really don't own that money. You're you're at the mercy of somebody else. So Wells Fargo on Friday or Thursday last week just kind of uh, shut down. <laughs> nobody could get their funds. Nobody could uh, access the ATM. They couldn't get online. They got screwed. And Wells Fargo is not saying why or hasn't said why at least in the time that I've that I've um, mentioned anything. So people who are trying to do their everyday business transactions, their everyday personal transactions, got effed in the a by the wells <laughs> uh <laughs> wendo you heard of this but like how does this kind of show a lot of people like listen this is the problem with centralization you know what, what do you think about that whole thing so this is my thing i understand that banking and that whole all aspect is important because people aren't able to pay their bills and stuff like that but when i hear stories like this this it, it bothers me because there's other industries that are affected more about it. Prior to me being in crypto, I worked in healthcare for seven years. So when I'm thinking, when you get, when everybody's talking about Wells Fargo, I'm thinking to myself, do you, there's, we have the, we have centralization issues with healthcare. I see companies that are closed, like do, a lot of doctor's offices are closed on weekends or they're closed at a certain time. So let's say that you're in New York, but you're traveling to California and you're trying to get medication and you need to get access to your medical records. There is no way for you to do that because those doctor's offices are closed and there's no database. There's nowhere where you can pull that so this stems the the whole wells fargo thing does suck but at the end of the day i feel like there's other industries that it does impact more and healthcare is something that i want to see i want to see put on the blockchain every company that's um, interested in doing that i support them and i want to see how they can fix that because that's a it's a problem there's people's lives at stake yeah i I mean i see i see your point it's just the the thing is i don't know if we can completely have 100 percent 24 7 of everything open i do believe the medical medical records yeah and medical um, you know, pharmacies and all this other stuff should be able to access your records 24 seven. That's stupid to wait till like the next morning, but you know, your medical needs are not on a business day, um, kind of situation. But I do believe that, um, I don't want people to be slaves to 24 seven work. We do need some time off every once in a while. And it would be really nice if we all had weekends off, but not everybody can. Let, let me do ask, that. last ask you this. So, sure. Wells Fargo was shut down. Does that mean you couldn't walk into the bank and do transact? Because their whole Correct. computer system was like. Correct. You could do zero I'm, things. I heard all this jazz, but I'm not a Wells Fargo Far- Fargo user, which is, is kind of interesting because like my bank wasn't affected. But <laughs> yeah. Everyone else is fucked. But yeah. um, I guess I didn't know the the, the extremes of it. Yeah. So that was the extremes of it. For, and sure, it was only for a day. But nonetheless, a day is important for some people. People have mortgages. They have all kinds of stuff. Like if you want to buy a house and you can't, like let's say your house is in escrow or your property or whatever you're trying to buy and sell with your Wells Fargo account is in escrow and you can't do it because the system's down. Like that screws all your stuff up. And you're probably going to hear stories about that. As I remember, I remember when we bought our house, it was so stressful and like 
any slip up with the bank that affected everything and it prolonged everything and you have we were under contracts and deadlines and all kinds of stuff so i feel like there's multiple aspects and avenues that you know wells fargo being shut down affects like people have to pay their credit card bills there's all you know there's, there's different types of things as well it's not just like the simple bills like daniel was saying it's like the you know the industry anybody that banks with wells fargo small businesses everybody's affected yeah, absolutely. And 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 here's the thing. I'm not saying that crypto is not affected by this because also happening this week, Bitfinex sh- shut down for two hours out of nowhere. Nobody explained why. Nobody explained how. It just two hours down. <laughs> Can't do anything. So, I mean, it's it's not it's not a new thing. It's just a more of a push for we need decentralization. We shouldn't have these issues. We need to have our money off of the exchanges. Now, if you have to have your money on an exchange, then be sure it's money that you are okay with not controlling 24 seven. Be sure it's Mm -hmm. money that, that you don't absolutely need uh, at any immediate future. I mean, look at um, Quadriga CX or something like that. Now everybody's kind of just screwed with that one because one guy died with the keys. So yeah. And to me, that's crazy. Okay. So it's so crazy. Like this is supposed to be like, okay. The fact that there's so many companies in crypto that are like so, irresponsible like these people have no business like having businesses like this but the fact that there was you have an exchange and there's one person that has controls of the control the keys like and there's no backup there is no whatever like there should be contracts there should be contingencies there should be things in place to 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 help with this and the fact that none of this was done that is absolutely insane to me yep uh uh but i mean this just sounds to me like look wells fargo wasn't like man let's shut everything down on everybody i think it's a technology either they got hacked or yeah something happened it's Mm -hmm. but i i feel like is it me somebody claimed that it was a fire but i don't hear any like confirmation that it was a fire on on their servers i have an interesting point um since i've been in crypto and and actually seen like all these hacks and all these internet you know i see more hacks in the crypto space and i see it happening now that i see it happen in the real world now it's like i'm kind of like jesus this is scary and i feel like it's happening more on just triple a companies like big big like it's not good it's it's because they're targets too they're all all these big companies are targets like the amount of money that i would imagine these large companies like wall the walmarts and the targets and mcdonald's like these fortune 500 companies that they spend um on security and keeping their their systems afloat it's got to be astronomical i am 99 percent certain that it is not an increase in hacking it is an increase in the reporting of the hacking and fast because uh, I mean, how many times have we gone through so many different um, uh, hacks or, or so many different news out, out, outbreaks where we found out that this incident actually happened a year before, eight months before, five months before, whatever? Maybe now we're trying to now we're starting to get instant leaks, instant instant news that hey, this happened, and now we know. So I just think, of course, it's going to be more digital hacking now uh, as as a crime, just because one, it can be done from anywhere in the world, and two, it's very profitable if you can pull it off. Um, physical crimes, nobody has money on them anymore. You you can take the credit cards, but that stuff gets canceled right away. It's right. like there's so many different things that you can't. You know, crimes are really being hurt by the digital revolution, <laughs> basically. Well, sticking to kind of the uh, the payment sector and or buying things, uh, local bitcoins, Daniel. What's going on with that? They changed their policy. Local bitcoins used to be a place where you could anonymous anonymously go to someone, buy some bitcoin, and get out. You keep your, you keep your, you have your wallet, and you give them cash, give them straight fiat, and you get your Bitcoin. I will say I did try to look at the prices beforehand when I first started to do uh, crypto, and it was a really high markup that they were selling you your the Bitcoins at. Um, what year was this? Well, it was worth at the time it was worth about eight hundred bucks, and they were selling it for like nine hundred, almost a thousand. Oh wow, that's a lot. And I, I didn't, like, I didn't huge experience markup. that when I did it. Okay. That was a long time ago. Yeah. It was a real huge markup. I was like, geez, this is insane. So, um, but now they're changing their policy completely. So instead of being anonymous, you do have to sign up and put in all of your information in order to comply with Switzerland's new uh, new laws in terms of cryptocurrency. So they're, they need to comply with that. It's a Finnish company. Uh, I think so. I think it was it Switzerland. Is okay. a Finnish company. No, I don't know if they're finished yet, but we'll see. 
Anyways, <laughs> I just wanted to see your reaction. What do you when mean? I, said, I wanted to see you your reaction see? when I said that. Local <laughs> Bitcoins is a that. Bitcoin startup coming based in Finland. Uh, I know, I know, buddy. <laughs> so anyways, you just want to prove me wrong. Don't don't out. get his blood pressure all worked <laughs> up over Andy, there. Yeah. I'm getting Andy Rowell. I want to see his face. My face is exploding right now. No, <laughs> when, yeah. no did you ever use local Bitcoins before, or do you have any experience with it? Me? No, I've never. I, this is the first that I'm hearing of it. I know there's other companies that do stuff like that. Like I want to say Ethershift does that. Does they have a service like that? Not 100 percent sure. And I feel and I know Crypto Space San Pedro, their OTC desk, and you can come in with cash and buy Bitcoin, or you can even do it over the phone or whatever. But they do do KYC with the local laws. Yeah, I think you're paying for. <sighs> if you wanted to go this route, you're paying for some sort of kind of security on your end uh you know the government is at least watching to making to make sure that these people don't do anything crazy with your with your funds and they're being very and they're being open at least i can see the benefit to this but the other half is you know one of the reasons why a lot of people like crypto is because they want to remain anonymous uh in certain aspects if they can't remain anonymous then which is i think a good way for the government governments around the world to kind of just say uh, this is how we're going to get a lot of people. If they can't, if people can't remain anonymous, then it's a it's a big issue. I don't know what will end up happening. I don't know uh, how this will affect anything. Maybe this is a good thing. I'm not sure. I mean, I, I, it annoys me that this local Bitcoin did it, and also Coinstar is doing it too with their CoinMean team up, which we had talked about with um with a uh, Um It was it was interesting. Um, I don't know. I don't well, know how I feel about putting in all my information with all these people. Well, this is local bitcoins used to be considered like the Craigslist of purchasing crypto. So it started in 2012, and I was on it in 2012, and it was a little different. I don't think the markups were that high back then. And um, you could advertise like, hey, I want to sell Bitcoin. Here are my rates. And then you would interact with them and figure out you know, how you're going to send it. Now, I met someone in person in a Starbucks. Well, that's what, how local bitcoins work. Right. But what I'm saying is... Yep. Yeah. This is 2012, and I had researched. This was the first time I bought most of my Bitcoin on Coinbase back in those days. But I did buy my first from a person in a in a in a place because back then it was like no one talked about this stuff, and it was very secretive. But I met a really nice person, and he's he's like, yeah, let's. Uh, you have cash? I was like, yep. <laughs> I was like, I was like, here's my cash. That doesn't sound shady but at I all. Had, no, I had already done my research. I knew how to receive Bitcoin. I knew what I was doing. And you sit there and he, you watch him plug it in. I mean, this is the, this is like buying a landmower on, on Craigslist. Like, what's the difference? Except it was Bitcoin. Yeah. Like, this is how people exchange pr privately. Right? Yeah, no. I, but, I, but, dude, okay, I remember when I first heard about Bitcoin, like 2012, 2011 from my family member, I am just remember, like, I remember he was telling me about it. I'm just looking at him like, are you out of your mind? Like, I'm not going to let you use my credit card. So it just create like, to me, I'm just visualizing, I'm just picturing you in my head in 2012, like, at a Starbucks, watching this guy send the transaction with yep. your cash, like, like, it just crazy. <laughs> it was really crazy for me back then. I was like, he's like, all right, just hang out with me. You got like, I had my computer too, mm -hmm. and I had um, access to a portal to get to my cold storage. So I had like kind of like a hot wallet, um, and I watched it. We waited, and guess how fast it, it went? It was fast as fuck. Hmm. Like this is when Bitcoin was fast. That shit went over in maybe twenty seconds. I would say like an email. Okay. Wow. Well, here's the thing. I I feel. But that was a time when it wasn't. Well, the point is they still have these markups. Now, what is my benefit for going with them if I'm giving them all my information and doing all this stuff? Like, are they going to bring yeah, down no the markups? There's, there's no benefit. There's peace of mind back. Like, I guess it's like it's a it's a peer to peer transaction of Bitcoin where you could actually be physically in front of the person and you know buying it and selling it or whatever you're going to do. Well, I mean, uh, the other thing I just don't think is I know that not everywhere in the world it's not um, everywhere in the world they don't have a Bitcoin. ATM and they don't or they don't have access to Coinbase or they can't use their credit cards. There's so many different things that they must use fiat and somehow get crypto for their livelihood, uh, whatever it may be. But in the major countries that are already kind of used to this, what is the benefit? Um, do you think like in the future, people are going to be all right with giving up their whole information and essentially treating Bitcoin like a bank, even though it's all yours and you own the whole damn thing? Oh, well, here's a scary thing. Binance is a photo of me holding up a thing that says what date it was. Well, you gave it to them. <laughs> but that's a crypto company that's uh -huh. a, a, 
everyone seems to respect the most, you yeah. know, out of an exchange. And they have all my information. This is a crypto company, which I always tell you, all this shit has to happen in crypto first before the real world can go decentralized, like majorly. There's pro there's non centralized there's there's no dis there's a lot of things that don't have decentralization in crypto right now. Yeah. I don't I don't trust it. I'm done. I'm You're done dead. with local bitcoins. Well, I guess I'll be honest with you guys. In 2012, it was realistic for me to go do that. Now, no way would I do that. <laughs> Basically, that's my reaction. Oh, really? Um, no. It, when you went to local bitcoins for Sandy back in the day, you in no way felt any fear of what was going to happen. Dude, did I? Did I? I've told this story back then. It was different. The difference is, is that. Real people didn't know what crypto was at all. I was only talking to people that really knew how to use it. So I was on Reddit. Where did they, I was like, hey guys, where do you think I should buy this? I remember going on Coinbase and talking to Brian, whatever the hell his name is, on the text chat being like, yo, if I buy Bitcoin here, is it safe? He's like, of course it's safe. And I was just texting Coinbase. That's how infancy it was back then, Daniel. Like but local like, Bitcoin, you felt safe because I got to. It's like okay, when meeting I, this guy at the Starbucks, can I explain you felt something? Safe. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Why? Because I've sold multiple things using Craigslist, whether it's video games. Uh, I sold a camera once worth two grand in a Starbucks. So if I could sell a camera in a Starbucks, I could buy a thing that was worth not as much as it was worth today. <laughs> Think about <laughs> not that even too. Close, yeah. So All right. don't come at me, man. I'm not I was, coming at you. I just want to know. I had to see who I was purchasing from. Then send, imagine s buying from someone on the internet and you're like, fuck. For me, it would have been a huge, I would have been like, nope. So <laughs> the in-person peer-to-peer was more comforting yeah. because I get to meet the guy, talk to the guy. He's not going to take my money and then knock me over in Starbucks and run out the door. He was set up on his computer like a, like a nerd. Like, like Depends look like on a, which Starbucks. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, um, oh good. Well, I'm. I know it works. I know people do it, and I, know I have people to defend it a little bit. No, you know? no, it, it it's definitely got some legitimacy to it. I just, I've never used it, and the fact that now they have my information, these people have to have my information is is just sketchy to me. Well, there's so many other places that you you provide your information that you buy Bitcoin from as well. True. So. I don't know. Listen, when the SEC is working on regulating cryptocurrency in the United States of America, and when we do get to a point where there are legitimate like regulations, guess what you're going to have to give these companies in America? Your yeah. information. Okay. Yeah. So. Oh, you guys want to know some news that's not, um, nobody's talked about it yet. It hasn't been published anywhere yeah. yet. Breaking Perfect news. Place Here we go. <laughs> so I was, on, I'm not going to say who I was on the phone call with. I can't give any details, but I have, I know people that, you know, have been in crypto for a long time and they buy and sell Bitcoin and whatnot, um, but basically, um, somebody from I want to say the SEC came or uh, FTC, one of those places. They came into their org establishment and they were like, you know, they were like applauding them, saying that everything they're doing is correct and it's regulated properly. But they're saying that a lot of the ATMs in the United States are not up to their standards, and they're going to be, um, they're either going to have to be up to the standards or they're going to be um, be taken down. And you're going to see this in the next year or so. That's happen. fine. Oh, wow. That's fine. I'm okay with that. I mean, I don't know what their standards are, but. I don't know either. I didn't get to, like, I wasn't at, because I don't really know. I mean, the only stuff, the only things that I know are, like, questions that I've asked attorneys and people from the SEC when I do the interviews on my channel. But um, the person that told me this, I trust them because they're not only good friends of mine, but they, I know that they operate their business legitimately. But it was really interesting that big government, Big Brother, is definitely watching. And they're paying attention to all these companies that are popping up that are selling crypto and that have ATMs and all these crypto-related companies and all these people that are like, oh, my company is not a security or this and that, and it's a YouTube token it's like the big government's going to come in and you know kind of shut them down and be like hey this is what you need to do like look what happened with paragon like they thought that they were being you know legit or all these companies that are getting fined you're going to start seeing it happen more and more yeah i mean uh, there i don't know I, I really don't know what the BT, btm regulations would be probably they want information they probably want to know more people's information so we may not have a place to purchase Bitcoin without having to give our information unless we well, legitimately go person to person in like well, a black yeah, and market. I think, 
I think that's what's going to start. I think that's probably what's going to start happening because at least in the United States, the SEC is not playing around. Like they, they have certain laws and regulations, and they're coming. They're con- they're continually to come coming out with statements. Um, there's different states that are passing like laws and legislation regarding crypto. But at the end of the day, they want to regulate it because they feel that it's uns- they feel like cryptocurrency is unsafe with all the ICOs and all the stuff that's happening. So basically, you're going to have to provide information about yourself to buy and sell Bitcoin um, on a legal exchange the, or a, a legal a legal exchange because we all know that there's some exchanges that are not legal and obviously you still can use those if you know how to do them i don't recommend that but the, you're going to start seeing more people selling pro- crypto probably on the black market so that you don't have to do that kyc this is going to uh. be like the drug war isn't it like yeah gonna it's going to be like andy's going to be and he's going to be at the star or starbucks or actually we're, we're going to be we're going to be meeting people we're going to be going to the lote man we're going to be buying yeah. the bitcoin there oh man <laughs> <laughs> let them end into new business Let's i should talk to did. starbucks Listen. time to sell b- over-the-counter well, uh, it, bitcoin at starbucks they have the app why can't i buy bitcoin on the <laughs> starbucks app i use it every day well here's the, here's, the, here's the thing this is what i'm trying to get at, is they're gonna they're gonna create something they're gonna create a monster that they don't intend on creating that they don't want to create but it's gonna happen or maybe they do want to create it if somebody's into conspiracies and stuff but just how like weed which was a very innocent drug got screwed over back in the 20s or whenever it did or or 40s even or. as as i was watching murder mountain on netflix which is about humboldt in the 70s and all the raids that used to happen there and people died and it's, like that's they, crazy they cre- yeah. they're gonna create something i recommend the documentary sort of market. yeah well i'm saying they're gonna create some sort of market they're gonna create some sort of underground thing that's gonna get very very shady and it's gonna hurt a lot of people right because of the way that they're doing this I mean, regula- regulation is a good thing up to a certain extent, but also, too, like, there, there's a lot. This is, like, a really, really extensive topic. The SEC, and I, I posted a tweet about this, and people got mad. People get mad at some of my tweets because I'm very honest and I don't care. But the SEC, they're coming out with these statements, and what they're doing is actually harming the community because they come out with a statement that's based on this law from the 1930s. And what they should actually do is either rewrite these, as probably rewrite write these laws that are out of date. They're from the freaking 19. 19- 1930s, but they're not giving people a, a clear specification of what needs to be done. They're coming out these statements that are not, they're not easy to read. They're hard to understand because they're using a lot of legal jargon and they're not, they're being very vague. It's like, they're saying like some, and cause I was, God was getting into it regarding um, what cryptocurrencies are security and what aren't like, there's all these guidelines that they have, but it's really easy to take those guidelines and take the Howey test and manipulate it to your sta- to your standards and i think that that's where the sec is failing is they're not doing us a service they're just kind of putting these statements out and not educate and they're not giving they're not giving clear guidelines and they need to do that and it's and the longer they wait to do that the bigger issue we're going to have in the united states yeah i always say there's the two sides there's the irs trying to figure things out and how, how to yeah. figure out the tax because we just recently did an episode about tax and stuff and now there's also that other side of the coin that we're talking about but I want to kind of move directions here to something that we all are on all the time. That's Twitter. Correct. But Jack Dorsey yes. has, has said something. What did he say? Dan? Well, he just, he <laughs> okay. just went off about Bitcoin. That's all it is. How much he loves Bitcoin. He loves Bitcoin. He loves Bitcoin. Right. And everybody's commenting on it. And really, it's, it's a no news. But this is just kind of like a what if situation. The rumors are that Twitter wants to or Twitter may put on some sort of lightning uh, Bitcoin wallet of some sort so people can exchange funds through twitter uh using bitcoin um i i'm one i would love for that to happen but i don't know if that would do you think that would help in creating more mass adoption or do you think that would help in creating more confusion or more centralization what do you guys think I think if they implemented um, what they want to do on Twitter, I think it'd be awesome for mass adoption, but I don't think it's going to happen just because there's so much law and regulation that would uh, regarding it. And I don't think I ought to be honest. I just don't see them doing it because it just would be a lot of work and be costly and all kinds of stuff. So he also destroyed one of my favorite apps of all time. And that was vine. He single-handedly and his company were like, how did he destroy that's Instagram? No, vine is owned by Twitter. My friend. Oof. Oh, yeah. It was owned by Twitter. But he, how did he destroy it? I, I don't mean he single-handedly... Twitter shut it down. Twitter but was like, we're no longer going to have Vine. Because they lost to Instagram uh, and Snapchat. I never consider... If you talk to any Viners, Vining was like so different. It was an art form. It was, it was absolutely I'm an sorry. Art form. I don't agree with that statement. It was nothing like Instagram. It was enough... That's why I'm upset. It was such a different thing that 
it's a shame it went away. Maybe it wasn't worth it to them, but I really wish they never got rid of it. It yeah. was it was a shame. But They're, they were competing with Instagram and they were losing the battle. Basically, that's what it was. I guess it's not the they, same. I completely agree. Twitter. There was I read many articles where there was no reason they they could have kept it going because it did have millions and millions of inf- there were influencers that had millions of followers. There was a big uproar, man. Yeah. Like it was a huge audience. And you're right. But look at look at what, Snapchat's getting swallowed by Instagram too. But guess Snapchat has the child the children's market. By the way, yeah, the people, children and the dirty people market. Yes, <laughs> but back back to I'm going on a tangent. But back to Twitter for me, I love Twitter. I like what he does. First of all, he has the square, which off the podcast I was talking to Daniel Wendo is that he his you know Twitter or he actually created a company called Square, which helped merchants do you know digital uh, purchasing, like created a new way yeah. of 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 getting rid of the cash register, pretty uh, but much. now you said uh, one of that that company you can get Bitcoin or you no, can no. do something so with now Bitcoin. He also owns Cash App, which was created as a merchant peer to peer for consumers. That anyone could be a consumer. I could charge you, uh, use I could send you cash or whatever. You know, uh, actually, I'm correcting myself. Cash was made as a Venmo. Okay, Square is if you want to be a merchant. Sorry. So just to correct the two. So on that app, you can buy Bitcoin. Uh, you could sell Bitcoin, but you can't move but it. But you never own it. So if this well, is if this is what the future has, you do for our on Twitter. the Cash App. You go, okay, you never <laughs> own it. So wait, so you don't, so you don't have your, you don't get your private, like they correct. don't send it. Correct. So so how does that? Okay, so because it's I like Robin Hood is kind of that way too. Robin yes, Hood exactly. Okay, that see, way. this is the thing. I don't like Robin Hood. I know there's oh. people that use it for trading, but I don't like so it stupid. because. I'm thumbing I, down right now. So I mean, I, I feel like I feel like it's easy to use, but like if I like with like with crypto, like if I'm going to trade crypto, I'm going to go on an exchange. I'm not going to use some weird app that I don't have access to my keys. Like I'm just not doing it. Yeah. Yeah, and and I don't when it, when they announced, I always wondered why when they announced cuz cash is a big deal in Square. Like they announced it, it really didn't shake up the moves. But now I kind of see you why. You see why nobody can own their and stuff. Robin Same thing Hood. with Robinhood. Nobody can own their stuff. They dropped that, that trailer with the astronaut. It's and then, awful. Ugh. It makes no sense. So if Twitter, Twitter, if you're listening, if you do that, we're not using your app on on the wallet. There, we need we need something. But what I what I applaud this as a, the rumor. How I applaud the rumor is that they're not creating their own currency well good for them because that's what i feel is going to be really annoying in the future is like okay in order for me to use netflix i gotta have netflix coin in order for me to use uh to go shop at vons i gotta have vons coin in order for me to do this uh, you know it's going to be too many coins and i need an I, we need a seamless way to easily go back and forth no but i i will say this if if they put like a hot wallet on my twitter you know account and you know i could do the security for my twitter you know uh but if they told me i could send bitcoin out of it and just use it as a hot wallet. I would say, I would say, cool. That's yeah, that's that cool. Would be awesome. That's cool. I now, would love that. I think it would be smart of him to do that. If he, he's like, Twitter now offers a wallet. Like, are you guys talking like Investfeed? Because Investfeed gives you like you have access to different wallets, so you can send other people's stuff. Well, no, I mean, there's a lot of wallets that do that. If they have a wallet like that, then we're all we're all for it. Here's 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 the thing. If Twitter allows for tips. If we can somehow connect our likes and our retweets to some sort of incentive program, oh my God, game over! I would be so happy. I would I would make twenty six cents a day, minimum with all my likes. <laughs> Good job, thank you. Um, so anyway, I think that kind of wraps up block news. I think we had some, it's a slower week, but there was some. I think we had some really good topics here. I mean, I agree. That was some interesting. You got me. You're welcome. You got me blowing up over here that's correct i swear to god Wendo, he picks the news so that i you know yeah that's what i do but but honestly sometimes i don't personally know what the news is going to be until until i get here yeah i do that too like when i do when i do my live streams because i do the daily crypto of Wendio, um i do it three times a week and i just get i literally will pull articles like right before i do it and then i skim over them and then i talk about it and I give my opinion and yeah i like to i like to do stuff like on the cusp that just like throw it out there to me it's funner it's more fun that way yeah, yeah and there's more reactions and, and, and in this case we i uh, i like to make sure i know the story as much as possible as to when the story comes out doesn't matter anymore well <laughs> i'd like uh, it to be recent last <laughs> last blog news episode daniel pulled an article from 2017 and yeah, had no uh, idea stash stash came out and he said hey that was from like a year and a half ago, <laughs> oh my God. I'm, like, I'm like i'm like hold well, on <laughs> please hold <laughs> it also it opened up some great topic though um yeah but uh wendo before you go we want you to play a game 
Mm-hmm. Yay. And this game is a game you haven't played yet, and it's called Shitcoin or Sci-Fi Movie. <laughs> Shitcoin or Sci-Fi Movie. It's a very simple game. We tell you a name. You tell us if it is a shitcoin or a sci-fi movie. If it is a sci-fi movie, I will give the description right after. Now in Espanol. <laughs> Por favor, vamos a hacer una... <laughs> uh, anyways, all right, here we go. Uh, are you ready to play this game? Let's do it. All right, very, very quickly. First up, Pandorum. That is sci-fi. Correct. Two crew members of a spaceship wake up from a hypersleep to discover that all their colleagues are missing. Despite this, it appears that they are not alone. <laughs> One right. Next, Birake. What is it? Birake. Birake? Mm-hmm. B-I-R-A-K-E. That is sci-fi. That is a shitcoin movie. Uh, oh. shit <laughs> That's a shitcoin movie. It would be great to make a shitcoin movie. Let's do it. That is a shitcoin. Up next, Splice. Oh, that's a shitcoin. Is it a shit coin? No, no, it's not. It's not a shit coin. Because we have it as a sci-fi movie. (laughs) Genetic engineers Clive, Nicole, and Elsa Cast hope to achieve fame by successfully splicing together the DNA of different animals to create new hybrid animals for medical use. Get it? Splice? Splice. Yeah, I should have. I should have known that. I took a geo or a some some whatever. You cut some shit up. Next, we got (laughs) Kova. Kova. That is a shit coin. That is correct. Two. Yay. Next, effect.ai. Oh god, that is a sh- that is a shit coin. That is a shit nice, coin. Three. Nice. Next, Infini. Shit coin. That is a sci-fi movie. Oh. An, an elite <laughs> search and rescue team transport onto an off-world mining facility to rescue Wit Carmichael, the lone survivor of a biological outbreak. Next Ooh. up, Kleros. Shit coin. Correct. For uh, Next, Diverge. Um, sci-fi. Correct. Although it does sound like a fork from Verge, the it survivor does. of a deadly virus is given the chance to reclaim his lost life by stopping the man responsible for the disease. Next, Narcopolis. Uh, sci-fi. Correct. In Six. the near future, Frank Greaves is a new breed of police officer working in a city where all re- recreational drugs are legal. When he is taken oh. off a case involving an unidentified corpse, he discovers that legalization has come at a price. <laughs> I want to see that. This is awful. <laughs> Next, Andron. Oh, sci fi. Correct. Wow. A group of people Seven. are plunged into a dark, claustrophobic maze where they must fight to survive as the outside world watches. Man, it must be really. Tight in those spaces. There we go. Aventus. Aventus? Correct. Um, let's do sci fi. That is a shit coin. Oh my god. Up next. Telios. Oh, that is a shit coin. We have it as a sci fi movie. Oh. <laughs> a deep space mining vessel has been adrift for two years. It is suspected the crew brutally killed each other, but the reason for the bloodbath is unknown. A rescue crew is sent to find if there are any survivors. What happened and why? Next, Suka, S U Q A, Suka. Oh, that is a shit coin. That is correct. Next, to give the number two, G I V E, to give. That's a shit coin. That is correct. Thank you for playing. That's that's all. And that's shit. nine. That's really good. Very, you know, very you guys. Good job. I'm su- I'm sad that we didn't have a Bruce Campbell movie in here for shitcoin or sci-fi. Because we all know them. We would know. If, <laughs> if, <it was laughs> if I told you a Bruce Campbell movie, then you'd, you'd be know. like, yeah, no, that is definitely <laughs> Spider-Man for part one. But Sam uh, Raimi directed it. Wendo, I want to thank you for taking the time today, as always. And uh, before uh, we let you go, uh, definitely like open up, tell us uh, where to find you, all that fun jazz. Yes. Okay. So um, I have a website, Crypto Wendio. Dot com, CryptoWindio.com, you will find all my events, you will find all my services, you will find disclaimers, you will find where to, my YouTube, everything. So that's like my hub of stuff. But I'm on YouTube, I'm on Twitter. Um, give me a follow, give me a sub on YouTube, that would be awesome. Cool. Excellent. And just like her, we have our hub, TheCoinBoys.com. Visit us there and give us a phone call, please. Yeah, what's the phone number again? 424-372-7437. Leave a message and I'll get right back to you. Yes. <laughs> I always I, I challenge you guys ask a question or just be ridiculous whatever you want to do we'll play it on the show. I'm gonna, uh, pr- I'm, gonna I'm gonna teach my daughter how to prank call. That would by be calling you guys. Perfect. enjoyable, very Perfect. enjoyable. Uh, again, uh, thanks everyone for joining Wendo. Thanks for coming, Daniel. I guess I'll see you next week or something. Sure. And we'll catch you later. 
Thanks. Peace, guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks.